Some of the things that that you found online, I'll just trot through three and I'll give a bit of a health warning to people in case uh, any of them, uh, uh, they are offensive and they're attacking in nature. But just a health warning to those of you uh, listening on at least one of them anyway. Uh, Self-loathing race traitor was something that she was descri- described uh, as trailer trash. Um, and Megan, uh, the queen of M. Island, M being an animal that I'm not going to say the sentence, but I think people can work out what animal that is uh, in the context. And we've seen that kind of language related to that animal used in football, uh, in racism in football and uh, and elsewhere. Um, loads of others uh, that, that you found as well. How did yes. how did the stuff directed at Meghan Markle compare to other racist uh, examples that you found online? Um. No. Well, I mean, I'll explain what we did. We, we cap- I'm involved in a project which is a combination of um, some journalism, lecturers and computing specialists, and, and we're interested in tracking the levels of um, hate speech and abuse on social media. So we thought this was an interesting case to look at. Um, what we've captured is a, is a snapshot, a sample. So basically we looked at a period of around a day just after the initial uh, announcement from Meghan and Harry. Um, we captured tens of thousands of tweets which mentioned Megan, um, overwhelmingly negative in sentiment, I think it's fair to say. Um, but the, the, the stuff that we were most interested in were, were the most abusive um, tweets. So we captured, in that 24-hour period, we captured around 400 tweets which were abusive about Megan and which contained what you would regard as some of the worst racist and misogynistic terms and, and the ones you've kind of read out there are at the kind of lighter end of the uh, spectrum it's fair to say so plenty so of it we was were, plenty I mean, of it was just kept, unreadable from my perspective it, it yeah. was yeah and even for people like myself who who kind of deal with this stuff on a regular basis it's still when you read through it and you actually read the content it is still shocking to read um and i know some of my computing colleagues who are used to kind of dealing with this kind of stuff are get really upset when they actually read the kind mm. of stuff that we're, that we're capturing. So, so I think sometimes you become desensitised to it when, when, you, when you see it a lot, but it, I was still shocked. Now, the internet and Twitter and online attacks are... I mean, sometimes newspapers put things out and they end up on the internet as well, so that can, that can feed it. It can feed the whole thing, can't it? The whole sort of system, the whole ecosystem of racism. Yeah, it's all connected, but, but, I think, yeah. But most people with even... Actually, you don't even need a public role for, for this to happen to you on, on Twitter and, and elsewhere. There's something about it that's that's just full of bile and full of venom and hatred and jealousy and enmity and all of those things. Is it is it any different for her because of the because of the scale of her position in in, in British life? I, well, that's a good question, and I, I wouldn't have clear evidence i mean my sense is that if you're a high profile person probably the higher profile you are the worse it is it's Mm -hmm. bad so you know we have lots of examples of female politicians who deal with this stuff on a daily basis um i'm sure i get it i I, you know i i get it not i'm not not on the same scale i don't imagine for a second but i i dis i just don't engage with it so I, I know that on a daily basis, when I do my job, there are people at home tweeting. I've muted them, on most of them. Um, yeah. But they tweet and, and I set up my screen in front of me so that they're not there. So I, I don't see what's being said because it's vicious, absolutely yeah. vicious. And it's endless. It's not just directed at me, but it's but it is directed at me. Now, yes. is there an argument that actually there are these weirdos all over the country? Some of them are racist. Put it to one side. Leave it. Or, or, or is it fair enough to say I can't stomach this? I cannot live like this. I think that has to be a personal choice. Um, I think uh, some people obviously uh, can deal with it better than others. Personally, I would much rather live in a society where nobody had to deal with that. I think of the course. reality is that if you want to be on social media and you are a person of profile, you will you will get a lot of this. And the sad fact is that you'll get a lot more of it if you're a woman. Uh, there's research yeah. that's shown that I think female politicians are three times more likely to get abuse than their male counterparts, for example. And obviously, the, in the case of Meghan, a lot of the abuse we found was what you might call misogynistic. Mm. Um, but there's the added kind of issue of um, the, the kind of racist content as well. So, where does it come from, this torrent of hate? 
As an investigation by Twitter analytics service bot Sentinel revealed late last year, Marker was the victim of an orchestrated campaign of harassment, with 70% of the content coming from just 83 accounts. As BuzzFeed reporter Ellie Hall explained... What you have here are accounts whose only purpose, it seems, is to tweet negative things about Meghan and Harry. Among those, Meghan was never pregnant. She used something called a moon bump to fake her pregnancies. And Archie and Lily, their two new children, or their new daughter, they were either born via surrogate or their dolls. All nonsense, of course. But what the research did not provide was any clear motive for the attacks. Like, what is the goal? Do you just want her to kill herself? Do you want them, you know, Harry to divorce her and come back? But there's no clear goal here. It's just hate. But the next question is, why do the mainstream media recycle it all? And the answer? For the same reason that Markle is paid $25 million for her podcast. The public has an insatiable appetite for royal stories, however trivial they may be. And as any student of the media would know, the tabloids thrive on bringing other people down.